Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first here, satellite imagery. We had a uh, big storm from yesterday move northward, weakening across the southwest interior here. Uh, areas of uh, snow over the Yukon Delta and on up in toward across the Nalato Hills. Mixture of rain or snow across the Kuskokwim Delta to mostly rain along the uh, Alaska Peninsula, portions of Bristol Bay back out to uh, where it's showery over the eastern Aleutians, and also some rain and snow showers moving into the Adak area, colder air and snow showers back out towards Shimya, light snow falling the entire day here over the Pribilof Islands, St. Paul, and that area extending back to the north and mostly to the west, but uh, still catching St. Lawrence Island earlier today with uh, some snow and less amounts uh, of that up toward the Bering Strait coast. Back to the uh, west, had a break come in over south central Alaska today with some sunshine across the Kenai Peninsula into northern Cook Inlet and uh, areas of uh, smaller areas are clearing up to the north, the main boundary right through here now and snow falling the entire day across portions of the Copper River Basin and uh, winter weather advisories are out for that area through tonight uh, for as much as 18 to 22 inches of snow in some areas. Other areas will see a mixture, a wintry mix, including freezing rain or mixed rain and snow, and possibly even just plain rain, but that'll be mostly down along the coast here uh, where the heavier amounts will be of liquid precipitation. And then clouds today across the southeast coast. And you can see uh, basically a south to north flow here carrying all that moisture from south to north. Another system developing here will be moving up here over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours, uh, coming right up into south central Alaska. So don't look for as much sun tomorrow as what we saw today here in Cook Inlet, the Kenai Peninsula, and those areas. Otherwise, uh, again, moisture, warmer air flowing northward. Uh, really, surface temperature is not all that warm. It's mostly overriding them, but still a warming trend for what it was for out, throughout most of last week. And this uh, flow basically making very little eastward progress there, a huge upper level ridge over western Canada, actually over the western North Pacific there, uh, keeping this band from pushing off to the east, keeps the flow south to north. And on the uh, chart today you can see uh, not much in the way of any precipitation here north of the Alaska Range other than maybe a few scattered snow showers or light flurries up along the boundary itself, uh, but that's about it. Uh, still rain or showers falling along the North Gulf Coast. I mentioned the snow, heavier amounts across Copper River Basin. A mixture of conditions here from the Alaska Range back out toward the uh, Bristol Bay area, Kuskokwim Delta, mostly snow falling across the Yukon Delta, and a uh, band of it here from Bering Strait to St. Lawrence Island, southward to the Pribilofs today. And uh, rain showers, west-southwest flow here, uh, bringing the uh, snowfall levels high enough to produce rain at the uh, sea level uh, locations there on Alaska and then the colder air coming down from the north here changing that back over to snow out towards Shimia. Pretty gusty winds here across the uh, southwest interior from uh, 20 to 30, 35 miles an hour. Some areas seeing some gusts up around 40 but that all in a diminishing trend here this afternoon is that 960 or 9, uh, yes, 64 millibar low continues to weaken and track up to the north Along the frontal boundary itself, we've got another development down here, which uh, tonight's forecast to pull up to the northwest here, and it'll begin to increase the uh, wind along the eastern North Gulf Coast and across the panhandles, that frontal boundary sort of, which never really actually pushes through, just stays near or off the coast there. And uh, so that's gonna bring the uh, more moisture up into the Copper River Basin and possibly some light stuff getting north of the Alaska Range along this uh, warm frontal boundary here into the Eastern interior, 40 mile country, possibly up toward Eagle. Basically dry, just some scattered rain and snow showers along the Alaska Range, rain showers for Kodiak Island. But the central interior, uh, dry, 
on up to the Arctic coast where you'll begin to lose the clouds the farther north you go. And it'll be mostly clear up there for the North Slope and the Arctic coast. And uh, kind of offshore flow, we'll keep the clouds in, but uh, the snow out here, mostly across uh, the northwest coast, still a chance of snow or snow showers with the Seward Peninsula tonight, that low slowly tracking northwards and keep conditions pretty unsettled out here in the west. A mixture of rain or snow, again, uh, Bering Sea, Perbloffs, probably in the form of snow with uh, areas to the south and southeast, which include the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians. Uh, whatever precipitation falls will be mostly in the form of rain. Could see uh, mixed conditions and uh, mixed rain and snow showers all the way out west. And then for tomorrow, the uh, flow out here actually becoming a little more westerly, so don't look for any big push of cold air. So keeping in the mixed precipitation uh, zone there for the uh, Aleutians in the form of scattered rain or snow showers. A trough uh, coming across, so pick the snow showers up a little bit. Really not all that strong of a feature there, but uh, look for rain and snow possibilities to increase there for the eastern Aleutian areas and eventually into the Alaska Peninsula. Accidentally hit the off switch there. Anyway, that low coming northward really weakens, moves into south central Alaska. Could see maybe up to half an inch of snow. Anchorage tomorrow be kind of a mixture depending on your elevation. Uh, but uh, more moisture coming into the Copper Basin and some good uh, drying behind that in the afternoon, breaking out the sunshine again, sort of like today here for the Kenai Peninsula, back down toward Kodiak Island, diminishing precipitation for the North Gulf Coast. But uh, for the Panhandle, we've got this uh, next system rolling northward here again, following the jet from south to north. So rain starting south, spreading north throughout the afternoon. Another increase in the winds on the south coast first and then working northward as well. North central Ontario, pretty dry, maybe some clearing, isolated flurries or snow showers up over the northeast and the Arctic coast looking pretty good. And there is a chance now of some uh, snow back to the northwest coast there as that whole thing shifts up to the north, weakening now down to 982 millibars. And out to the west, not much, just uh, again more of a westerly flow now instead of uh, northwest to southeast. So a couple of troughs keep it uh, showery and a little bit unsettled out in that area. Taking a look at Tuesday, next storm finally pushes in, but staying way out to the west there, affecting just shimmy and at two late in the afternoon. Pick the winds up a little bit, bring a chance of rain or rain and snow mixed into the interior or in, into those areas. With this uh, weak low developing and mostly uh, snow with that, but that'll be uh, north of the uh, Adak Atka area. But with the trophic city south, you'll see a chance of rain or snow with that, a better chance actually. Scattered snow showers to the eastern Aleutians or rain and snow showers there, kind of right on the edge. Back to the north along this trough, uh, showers continue, but not quite as widespread here along the southwest coast. That original low now way up there to the north and quite weak with just a leftover trough behind here with some light precipitation. Pretty good over the central northern interior areas. You can see that system off uh, that affects uh, the southern panhandle tomorrow and tomorrow night pulls northwest again and that'll bring another increase in the wind and rain and some more warm air spreading up to the North Gulf Coast. Uh, mixed rain and snow uh, up over at the Alaska Range, uh, back down across Cook Inlet to Northeast Bristol Bay. All rain, another good shot of moisture coming into the North Gulf Coast areas, Prince William Sound, and across the panhandle there with uh, gale force wind associated with the front itself. But again, up to the north, light winds, fair dry conditions, and of course, temperatures will be cooler. And for speaking of temperatures, lows tonight forecast uh, a little below zero here, mostly uh, north of the White Mountains into the Yukon Flats, right around zero, plus or minus a few degrees, and above zero for the Arctic coast and North Slope, anywhere from zero to 10 above for the low temperatures. And those mild southerly winds with that low tracking northward will keep uh, lows tonight in the lower 20s up over Kotzebue Sound, upper 20s there for the Nome area. Lower to mid 30s over the southwest interior areas, right on down into Bristol Bay, with mostly uh, lower to mid 30s for the Alaska Peninsula. And out to the west, cooling, colder air coming in, wrapping in around uh, 20s in across the Aleutians and the Pribilofs, upper 20s, with lower 20s for St. Lawrence Island. And south central Alaska, looking at lows tonight uh, in the mid 20s to maybe near or into the lower 30s. Definitely 30s along the uh, North Gulf Coast area, back to Kodiak Island and lows uh, quite mild there for the panhandle, anywhere from the mid-30s to as high as the upper 40s there in the Port Alexander-Sitka area. And for Monday afternoon highs, 
shaping up in the 45 to 52 degree range here for the southeast coast. Uh, definitely the warmest spot in the state will be those areas. And uh, maybe some mid 40s showing up now along the north Gulf Coast, like around Cordova. Otherwise, mid to upper 30s, inland areas, south central Alaska, Cop River Basin, anywhere from 28 to 35 for the highs. North of the mountains, teens for Northway and Toke, but Eagle could pop up to 35. And uh, teens are near 20 in the central interior, with mid teens along the Arctic coast. East side there, Kaktova could reach 20 degrees, otherwise, in the 30s for the Seward Peninsula area and down across the uh, Yukon and Cuscombe Delta with uh, or the uh, Monday afternoon high near the frost point there for St. Paul, lower to mid 30s for the Aleutians. And then for the uh, lows Tuesday morning, uh, near zero through the Yukon Flats, down in toward 40 mile country, generally five to 15 over the Copper River Basin or from the Copper River Basin up into the Tanana Valley. Out west, mild or mid-20s for the lows again for the Seward Peninsula. North side, though, Kotzebue Sound, Sulawak Valley, right around the 20-degree mark. Single numbers up over the North Slope and the Arctic coast with mid-20s for the Perbolofs, upper 20s to lower or mid-30s for the Alaska Peninsula area. And then, uh, again, cooling as you head west here, 24 for the low for St. Paul, 30 for Alaska, falling into the mid to upper 20s here from Atka all the way out to Shimia and Attu. And taking a look at high temperatures for Tuesday afternoon in the teens to lower 20s from the Tanana Valley, but mostly in the mid to upper teens from there northward on out to the Arctic coast and 40s again for the Panhandle. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Taking a look at our first significant weather chart here, uh, IFR. In the red, uh, from the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island, down across the Yukon Delta coast, inland, and a little bit back to the western Nunavak Island and over the southwest mountains. Lots of areas of marginal VFR, Bering Sea and Aleutians, to just plain VFR for Adak and Atka starting the day out on Monday. IFR here, uh, Talkeetnas, across the central southern Copper River Basin down to the coast range. Marginal VFR along the north Gulf Coast into the Panhandle. Northward across 40 mile country in Yukon Flats is some VFR with the central interior. Tomorrow afternoon, areas IFR here, uh, back from the Bering Strait, northern uh, north of or over St. Lawrence Island into the Yukon Delta, and then along the Kuskokwim and Alaska Mountains there with Alaska Range with uh, some IFR now up in over northwest Prince William Sound, patch of it up here over the central interior near the White Mountains, and then farther north there toward the Brooks Range. Uh, southeast coast here, not too bad, some leftover marginal VFR in the afternoon over the northern areas. VFR to the south with the marginal stuff right along the coast. And then for Tuesday morning, areas of IFR, or pretty solid IFR actually there from about Liktok on over to uh, Mackenzie River Delta area, and then along and just south of the central and eastern Brooks Range. And some marginal VFR, again, up to maybe as far north as Eagle, southward into the Gulf of Alaska and eastward across the Panhandle. IFR, lower conditions here across the southwest uh, from northeast Bristol Bay and the Aleutian Range right up into the uh, Cuscombe Valley and the mountains there back to the coast in areas, also some areas of up there around the Bering Strait and the Seward Peninsula. Looks like uh, VFR there, Adak, Atka, Nikolsky to Unalaskan Dutch Harbor. Looking at uh, Tuesday afternoon, Big swath IFR now here from north to, to south from the western, along the Arctic coast, southward across the western interior, right into uh, Bristol Bay. Marginal VFR here covering just about all of the interior now, except for a patch up there over the Brooks Range. IFR seems to be on the increase out here over the Aleutians, especially the southwest Bering, but the Pribilofs in the marginal VFR zone as well as the Alaska Peninsula and the Gulf of Alaska to the southeast coast passes Anatovic and Anagan, both VFR throughout the day tomorrow on both approaches. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR here and lowest conditions again, eastern entrances, VFR off to the west. And for rainy, starting out marginal, gradually becoming VFR into the afternoon. Windy marginal VFR tomorrow. Isabel, marginal, slow improvement throughout the day. And for Mentasta, same trend and forecast. For Tanita, Starting out IFR, possibly becoming Mar or VFR, or will probably will become VFR in the afternoon. And for Portage, IFR to start with, possibly becoming VFR by late afternoon or early evening. And for Chilkoot and White, uh, improving trend, IFR to start, improving to marginal. And for the freezing levels here, uh, quite a gradient now over along the eastern border here, down in across the panhandle, uh, 2,000 feet. 
uh, right through about the central Tanana Valley down to the Prince William Sound area. And then you've got seas levels as high as 8 to 10,000 feet with that upper level ridge over uh, western Canada. And we'll see icing. Uh, probably nothing too, just isolated, moderate uh, icing, rime icing here. I don't think it'll be, uh, the moisture seems to be cut off enough, there won't be any considerable moderate, but uh, in this zone here over the northern pan, it'll back into the Copper River Basin and gets kind of scattered out as you get up to the Alaska Range. Some areas out here over the southwest interior to the Bering Strait, another swath up there over the northeast interior, and from about the Pribilofs down to the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutian areas. And moving on to the uh, jet stream, here's that big upper level ridge here over actually western North America and the high freezing level associated with it. So suddenly flow about 90 to 100 knots here still bending around this low that's pushing in, breaking underneath that ridge toward the west coast. And so we get still have southerly flow there, keeping the moisture locked into that area. A weaker southerly flow back across uh, Kodiak Island into the central interior. Big trough over the Bering Sea. And taking a look at the 9,000 foot wind flow chart, we've got uh, not too bad in those winds, northwest or west northwest, 20 to 25, and uh, maybe even down to 15 for the central Aleutians. Strongest wind south to north here as this low lifts northward, higher pressure to the east. Good gradient right over the interior, 20 to 25, as high as 35 to 40 knots here uh, up over the Seward Peninsula. And then uh, maybe another strong wind zone right through here, 50 to 45 knots, mostly into Canada. Same pattern at 3,000 feet, more or less. Uh, 30 to 40 knots, so along and off the panhandle. South to north here, 25 to 45 over the western interior. And with that goes quite a bit of moderate chop here in the west, a narrow band in the east, and the panhandle. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining me once again is Cindy Preller. She is the Tsunami Program Manager for the National Weather Service in Alaska region. Thanks for joining us again, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. We're talking about tsunami awareness and safety here in Alaska especially, and one of the things that has been uh, your, one of your main focuses is uh, the Tsunami Ready Program. What is that, and uh, how do Alaskans find out more? Awesome. Yes, yeah, Tsunami Ready is a National Weather Service hosted program mm -hmm. in uh, partnership with Storm Ready. Okay. And it is a program that we uh, conduct with our partners in the state, mm -hmm. but it's mostly community driven. So if okay. a community wants to become Tsunami Ready, well the first thing they need to do is get a hold of me or, or their local WCM at a weather mm -hmm. forecast office okay. or their Tsunami uh, team at the state level. So, and this is something that's a NOAA grant, so there's money available to help encourage the preparedness at, at the local level there in the city or the, uh, the village. Yeah. What are some of the places that have done this already? Oh, our oldest tsunami ready city is Seward. Good. You know, but also Sitka, Homer, Valdez are the, you know, the main players, but we've got, mm -hmm. we've got several tsunami ready communities that I'm very proud of. It takes several years to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And so a few of the things that they do is um, the tsunami risk will be assessed by okay. someone like me or another scientist will help find out, you know, really what their probability is. Mm -hmm. We'll create an inundation map, an evacuation map. Okay. They'll have a mitigation plan. Um, we will set up uh, some partnerships with the schools, yeah. uh, make an evacuation shelter, and then they need to practice. But it is the city that owns the program, really. Mm -hmm. It's up to them. And many cities would like to have sirens, and so we help them get those. And you know, and they practice. They have to practice. Sure. So let's say I'm driving into a place like Seward that's tsunami ready. What are some of the things I should look for as maybe a visitor, that no, so I know maybe where I need to go or can be more aware of my tsunami risk? Absolutely. The tsunami ready signage is, is really blatant. It's this, okay. you know, blue and white curling wave sign and, mm -hmm. and there's different shapes of signs that will show you if you are in the hazard zone or mm -hmm. where the evacuation routes are and when you're out of shelter. Okay. So this is a, a multi-step process that helps the uh, residents be more aware of their own risk but then also prepare for when that risk arrives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, many communities um, uh, sound their sirens daily, some sound, sound them weekly, you know, okay. to make sure everybody knows what they mean. Mm -hmm. And um, there's often drills. We have an annual drill once a year. We have Tsunami Awareness Preparedness Week. Mm -hmm. And that's a good time for each community to, to do some exercising. Okay. And is this a program that is unique to Alaska? 
Absolutely not. It's national. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, all over the country, you'll have the same signage, so it's, it's consistent. Good. So if I'm taking the kids to California, I should be able to see something familiar. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, some communities hesitate because they think it'll discourage tourism. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to tell those communities that what they're actually doing is they're encouraging responsibility. Sure. The tsunami is going to happen. Right. And it's going to hit every coastline. So, you know, it's, it's not about when. It's, mm -hmm. It'll be any time. So the fact that they're showing tourists that they are making steps to be prepared for this, I think, would encourage people to want to stay there. Right. And that would be no different than, say, you or I visiting the Midwest where we know there's going to be really bad thunderstorms and maybe there's a risk for tornadoes. We're, we're aware of that risk when we go there. Absolutely. If I see a sign for a tornado shelter, I'm going to remember that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're just doing a better job of being more prepared with something that's bound to happen again. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Where can people uh, go again to learn more about the Tsunami Ready program here in Alaska? Well, one, there is a Tsunami Ready website. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just Tsunami Ready Google and that'll tsunami get ready. you there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then probably the best person for people to contact is their warning coordination meteorologist okay. at their local weather forecast office, which is Anchorage or Juneau, most likely. Okay. All right. So most of the folks along the Bering Sea coast, again, are not at a huge risk for tsunamis. No, they don't need to worry about it. Okay, Thank very you. good. But always learning to be uh, prepared no matter where you are in Alaska, uh, no matter what the risk, always a good step. And tsunami is a major player in that, as we well know from events like 1964. Mm -hmm. okay. Alaskans are resilient. I really believe in them. Very good, very good. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for joining us again. And uh, please make an effort to uh, learn more about the Tsunami Ready program in your village and uh, town if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be back with Cindy again uh, next time to talk more about the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska. We actually have a group of geologists working for the National Weather Service. So scratch your head on that one and we'll join you next time. I'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Packs. <music>and uh, not much change expected from the next uh, three or four days. So moving on to the marine forecast, uh, coastal waters, uh, small craft advisory winds here for the south coast, 25 to 30 knots out of the southeast, gale force southerlies for the north coast, 35 to 40 knots, seas up to 23 feet. Uh, Northern Lane Canal winds becoming north at 20 knots with four foot seas and then even uh, some stronger gusts here. Sustained 20 for Stevens Passage, gusts 35 knots. And then winds out of the east for Clarence Strait at 25 with gust of 35. Forecast for Tuesday, southeast 30 knots now for Clarence Strait with 9-foot seas. We've got southerly gales on the south coast with seas around 20 feet. Southeast gales on the north coast there and seas also about 20 feet with 40-knot uh, gusts in the forecast for Stevens Passage. Southeast 25, 5-foot seas for Northern Lane Canal. Prince William Sound tomorrow, southeast 25. 5-foot seas, westerly 20 for the North Gulf Coast there uh, behind the uh, frontal boundary, becoming southwest for the Barren Islands at 20 knots. Light southeast winds comparatively here for Kachemak Bay into Southern Cook Inlet and even lighter north of the Forelands. Outlook for Tuesday, uh, increasing the winds once again, northeast 15 for Northern Cook Inlet, but 30 knots uh, for the southern areas and Kachemak Bay back into the gale category with north at 35. Seas building to 12 feet, northeast 30 for the Barren Islands and east 30 knots here for the western North Gulf Coast. Pick up to minimum gales as seas rise to 18 feet there on the east side. Prince William Sound, small craft advisories for those northeast winds. And for Kodiak Island, kind of a light wind day tomorrow, south 15 uh, knots with seas in Shelikoff Strait, 4 feet but 14 feet there on the east side. Uh, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, south at 15, picking up a little bit, 20 knots, southerly 20 for the Alaska Peninsula, as well as Bristol Bay. And then for Tuesday, north 20 for Bristol Bay, northwest winds 20 knots across the Peninsula with 7 to 8 foot seas, small craft advisories from Sitkanak to Castle Cape for those north 25, and 30 knot winds now to the north and northwest for Shelikoff Strait and Kodiak Island. Eastern Aleutians, Fox Islands, uh, west at 20, west northwest at 20, with northwest uh, at that speed back towards uh, Adak and Atka, 
with uh, 10 foot seas, small crab advisories here, 25 knots out of the northwest for those western zones. And then for Tuesday, west 25 here, west of ADAC, southwest 25, toward, closer towards Chimney and at two. Otherwise, westerlies 20 to 25 from Atka Island become northwest 20 to 25 here across on Alaska Island. And for the southwest coast, uh, north of Nunavak Island, light southwesterlies, but uh, south of Nunavak Island, south at about 20, northwest 20 for the Pribilof, St. Matthew Island, south 25 for St. Lawrence Island with eight foot seas. Those uh, really lighten up the next day on Tuesday with west, becoming west at 10, sea subsiding at four feet, northwest 15 here uh, uh, from uh, north side of Nunavak Island out to St. Matthew Island, down across the Pribilof, seas down to six feet, north 20 south of uh, Nunavak Island. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, easterlies 10 to 15 knots, about 10 knots for the central coast, 15 for the west side, so not too bad wind-wise tomorrow for those areas. But picking up from uh, Cape Thompson south to the Bering Strait, uh, east at 30 knots. And then those become southerly and come down to 20 knots uh, from the uh, uh, strait here all the way up to Cape Beaufort. And then southeast 15, uh, western and central coast to east at just 10 now for the eastern coastline. For tonight, again, uh, the next system coming northward here after the break uh, this afternoon. Just some lingering rain and snow showers along the Alaska Range. This low continuing northward, continuing to weaken, so the uh, wind and snow and showers will, be will slowly be subsiding, but uh, continue throughout the night here in the west. And uh, uh, winter weather advisory after the Copper River Basin. Uh, tonight into tomorrow, more moisture streaming northward, uh, probably pick the snow back up again. So 18 to 22 inches possible in some areas and also some freezing rain as well. Rain and wind and uh, back across the panhandle and the north Gulf Coast. Then for tomorrow, uh, still uh, showers, but becoming more scattered and isolated here, especially across the Cuscombe Delta to probably ending for Bristol Bay. And uh, breaking out to some sunshine, Kodiak Island, and in the afternoon for the Kenai Peninsula as that system weakens and moves inland. Look for areas of snow across south central Alaska and again on into the Copper River Basin. More uh, rain for the Panhandle. That whole system lifts northward on Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.